today's episode, we are speaking to Magdi Mikhail, a Coptic migrant and former member of the local government here in Sydney. Magdi, thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Now, to start off with, um, what year did you migrate to Sydney and um, what were your first impressions? Yeah, actually we arrived exactly in the early morning of 21st of October 1987. I arrived with my wife and my two daughters. Uh, they were at that time eight years old for Mariette and four years old for Monica. So we arrived in the early morning of October 1987. What were your first impressions when you arrived? Of course it is uh, the land of unknown, yeah. uh, but luckily we have some of my family which it make, made the life more easier. Uh, my brother-in-law and his wife, which it is my, sis my wife's sister. So, of course, they made life more easier than mm. we do know anybody in, in Sydney. Yeah. So, how much did you know of the church here when you were planning to, to move? Yeah, I understand that uh, there is a presence, good presence of the church and Coptic community in Australia. Mm. But, of course, not similar to Egypt. But at least I knew before that there was a, a big and large section of Coptic community in Sydney. So with family here already, what was that like settling into a new church and a new congregation? Was it easier? Or? Yeah, it was easier actually because uh, uh, the, the congregation here, we found a lot of uh, affection, a lot of, a lot of cooperation, a lot of welcoming. So we, we felt not, not very bad, we mm -hmm. felt good. What was it like, what was the response from like the priests at the time? Yeah, actually the priest, uh, I remember uh, Father, the very reverend Father Samuel Wadia Gerges, who was a parish priest. Mm. He was really, really a very big uh, hearted man, very humble, very giving person, very caring person. So he made life much, much easier for us. He was caring socially, spiritually about us. Mm -hmm. So it impacted, impacted very well on our life. What size would you say the congregation, this was in Sydney? Of course. Yeah, was the congregation larger at the time? No, than, it or? was not larger as, as, it's, as, as now, mm. but it was reasonably uh, maybe, maybe 200 families mm. in Sydney Church at that time. Now I think we have over 600 families mm. after the church has been moved to, uh, to Bixley. Yeah. What was it like for your daughters growing up alongside other Coptic immigrants and their children? Yeah, yeah they found it easier because when, uh, the, when we came from overseas, my elder daughter and younger daughter was, uh, as I mentioned before, eight years yeah. and four years old. So they were mixing with the children and at church also in Abu Dhabi, in United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. uh, my elder daughter was in a private school, which they normally teach in English. So it was not a very uh, serious uh, change or big change for their uh, comfort zone. Mm. Which is good, which is good. Yeah. And um, in terms of what was your involvement with the church and the services upon your arrival, and then how has that progressed? Yeah, actually, time? when I arrived, actually, uh, and uh, became a member of the parish of uh, St. Mary, St. Mina at Sydney, uh, Father Samuel uh, actually uh, gave me the, uh, the task or the, the, the uh, project to nourish or look after the newly migrant, newly comers. So I was looking after the engineers and the people looking for jobs, how they apply, how they write their resume. Uh, I did this uh, meeting for the newly comers regularly, for the engineers, for doctors, for accountant, bringing some people from government departments to, uh, to, to give them some presentation, some talk uh, about how they prepare for interview, how to apply for a job, where they can apply and uh, uh, how they can apply for a job. So it impacted and made the life of the newly migrant more easier. Of course. Um, is there any particular story from there, any person that stands out most? 
perhaps? Uh, actually, I remember that there was, although he was academic and he was a very highly qualified person, uh, his name is Dr. Amir. He's a, 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 a chemist. He's a chemist. And uh, he was, he came in the same time, same period we came from overseas. Mm. And I remember that he attended one of these newly comer meetings and he enjoyed it very much. And every time I meet with him, if I, if I bumped into him in a wedding or uh, a conference or any, any occasion, he said to me, I never forget the meetings you, you organized for the newly migrant people. I benefited very much from these meetings, those meetings. Mm -hmm. So he always remembered that he has been benefited from those kind of meetings. And it's good as well because it came from your, like you had the experience yourself of arriving and everything. Exactly. And how did it progress from that afterwards? Did you do any other services following yeah, that? I, I actually, I was engaged twice in the church committee, the board of deacons committee as well. So I was officially as a board member of St. Mary at Sydenham, have been elected twice, then the board of deacon, then when His Grace uh, Bishop Daniel uh, took office or enthroned to the Diocese of Sydney, I was part of what they called at that time, in 2005, I think, uh, advisory board, board, advisory board. So uh, this was the story, so I have a very, very uh, reasonable involvement mm -hmm. in the church activities. What did that advisory board role involve? Uh, they also advise the bishop in a lot of financial administrative issues related to the diocese. Mm. So like diocese matters? Diocese matter, yeah. Um, they are board members, advisory board members from mm -hmm. all over the churches in Sydney. So I think it was a very large number of members, maybe around 40, 50 members. Wow, it would have grown a lot since the early days. Exactly. Um, so you mentioned before that you were in, you, you went to Sydenham Church. Yes. What are some of your favorite memories of the early days? I remember when uh, His Holiness, uh, late Bob Shenouda, uh, was the first visit in 1989, and he visited uh, this beautiful church, which has a great memories in my, in my mind at mm -hmm. Sydenham. And uh, when we welcomed him in the church, it was very packed, packed with people and uh, very well organized the people and uh, uh, the way they booked and security and uh, uh, how the people uh, booked their seats to, to attend the mass. Uh, at Sydney Church during his holiness first visit to Australia in 1989. So it was a great memory. We accompanied him in a lot of conference, public meetings in Sydney University. So it was a great, great, great historical uh, time. Had you met him before? Or? I don't remember that I met his holiness in Egypt, but I remember, I do remember that I attended many of his ceremonies in Abbasaya mm. and the uh, papal, uh, on the big church yeah. in, in Abbasaya. So what was it like for you meeting him for the first time personally when he was in Sydney then? Yeah, he was really, really very impressed. People are very impressed with his ceremony, with his uh, answers, with his uh, intelligence and any, any subject he can talk very, very efficiently mm. at any matter or any subject. He was a wealth of knowledge and information. Mm. I remember, I do remember that one of my uh, Australian friends who was uh, still a very good friend of mine. I met him uh, when I came uh, to Australia. Uh, he insisted to me that he loves to attend one of his Holiness Bob Shinoda ceremony. And he came with me in the, uh, to, to do the ceremony, the public meeting held in Sydney University War Gym. He was very, very impressed about his uh, uh, skills and his uh, uh, way of attracting the audience. Mm. So uh, it has been a very great memory in our mind. What was um, His Holiness's first impressions of Sydney and the churches here when he came? 
Yeah, I remember that uh, I think about eight bishops, Amba Bishoy and Amba Bola, Amba Musa, there was a big, big number, large number accompanied His Holiness when his visit here. And he was very, very impressed about the church and the youth, especially his, his uh, Grace Bishop Musa. Yeah, he said, I found the youth here very spiritually nourished, probably better than Egypt. Wow. So uh, they were very, very impressed with the, with the service here in, in Sydney, especially. Mm. Now, what, what are your thoughts on what happened to Sydney and everything? Actually, uh, I remember that Rockdale City Council has been, uh, uh, has been invited His Holiness for a welcoming reception banquet in Rockdale City Council in the building. This was 2002? Uh, I... I don't remember exactly the date, probably 2002. And uh, while His Holiness was there, and there was uh, some talk and dialogue and uh, uh, some thinking of uh, relocation of Sydney Church to another location due to the aircraft noise and during, uh, due to this uh, big miss of the third runway of the airport because of the close vicinity of the Sydney airport mm. and the incidents associated with the air, airplanes landing to the airport and the huge uh, noise mm. and vibrations to the, to the extent that one roof tile has been fallen off the roof and was nearly falling on uh, one of the children's head and thank God he has been missed it by a glimpse of a second, otherwise he has been killed. So uh, during this uh, negotiation with the federal government to relocate to, to Bixley, I recall that I whispered in his holiness ears about uh, you, you, your, uh, your holiness, we are relocating to another location and we are thinking to keep and preserve uh, the old church and convert it to the new generation to be benefit as a Coptic pharaonic museum. Mm. His Holiness straight away replied immediately and he said it is a brilliant idea, go ahead for it, God bless you. So His Holiness was very enthusiastic to, to, to have something about our roots, about history, our history, about our culture as a Coptic and from the descendants of the pharaohs. Mm. Now, um Sydenham Church, a lot of the parishioners from the early days went on to become priests, nuns, monks and bishops. I mean, how proud are you that so many people took that path? We are actually very proud because uh, St. Mary and St. Mina Church uh, produced a very good fruit. Mm. You can say that we have many priests has been graduated from St. Mary. We have Bishop Daniel, the abbot of St. Shunuda Monastery, has been taught and nourished spiritually in St. Mary Church. His name was Murad. Mm. And also Amba Angelus, our bishop in London, our bishop Suriel in Melbourne. All of those young generation grown up in Sydney here were taught, spiritually nourished at St. Mary Church in Sydney. Yeah. And there's a connection as well with your family. Father David up in Brisbane is one of your son-in-laws as well. That's right. Yeah. What's that like having that connection with another part of Australia as well? Because you now know the church in Brisbane as well now. Yeah, he's actually uh, ordained after his graduation from the pharmacy as a pharmacist. And my daughter and uh, David, Father David, who his name was Fadi before ordination, before calling to, to serve the Lord. Uh, he was a pharmacist. He served as a pharmacist for nearly four years. Then he has been called to serve the Lord. And when I said to my daughter, why you are going to Brisbane? Why you couldn't, you, you did not serve here in Sydney? She said, Dad, if you wanted to serve the Lord, you can serve the Lord anywhere. So he accepted the call from God to be a priest for priesthood and he ordained and after returning back from the 40 days 
uh, in the monastery. He spent about one month uh, at uh, St. Anto Gerford to be taught and uh, giving some experience by re the Reverend Father Tadros uh, Saman. Uh, then straight away he went to look after the, the f our first church in Brisbane, which was uh, served for long years by the very Reverend Father Musa Solomon. So he was young, he was no have no uh, such huge experience to fill in the shoes of a very experienced uh, priest, Father Musa Solomon. But through the guidance of God and the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ and his hands worked very well with uh, Father David and he looked after the church from 2004, June 2004, he ordained in May 2004 until now he is still serving the people and the church grown up from maybe 80 or 90 or 100 families to 200 families now. After after 15 years. I understand there was another special announcement that happened recently for him as well. Uh, yeah, he has been sung God, uh, and God grace. He has been uh, promoted, elevated to the rank of hegemon hegemonis, uh, egumenis in Coptic language. He has been elevated just last Saturday. And even his little son, uh, Damien Corollos, who has been born on 9th of March, uh, at the memory of uh, Pope Corollus, late Pope Corollus uh, departure, uh, he has been elevated to the rank of Ognostos instead of Absoltus because uh, his grace Bishop Daniel noticed his uh, active, his commitment, his uh, uh, ability to learn and recite a lot of Alhan in Coptic and hymns in English, reading the Bible, his activities in the church, preparing the altar, preparing the Sharia for Abuna and letting the candles around the, the church and the altar. So he has been, uh, some of the deacons actually recommended him and somebody recommended him to his uh, Grace Bishop Daniel and he has been promoted at the same time. It was a surprise for all of us. Nobody knows, even himself. So it was a big surprise and thank God that uh, uh, what God working in a mysterious way in uh, Abuna David and uh, his family's life. Now, the church has progressed and has been very successful over the past 50 years as we're celebrating the anniversary. Um, what, do you, what do you think are some of the best achievements that the church has accomplished in this period of time? Uh, I think the church has started to, to, to open to the outside world to the other churches, good relationship, good relationship with government, department and government organization. And uh, our young generation like you started to get involved in, uh, in politics in public life and in uh, connecting the church to outside, to the, to, the outer, to the wider community, Australian community. So this has been impacted very well and very positively to the church uh, reputation, the church uh, uh, image. She introduced our heritage, our roots, which backdated 2,000 years from since then, San Mark, introduced it to the uh, Anglo-Saxon and to the Australian uh, community. When you migrated here, did you ever think the church would be where it is today? Not, not as such a success, yeah. Yeah, and thank the Lord that uh, our uh, Coptic Church has achieved a lot in the land of immigration, whether in Australia or Canada or America. This is due to the, uh, to the wisdom and the long vision of His Holiness Pop Shenouda III, which he, he planned to send our teaching, our culture, our history to all the world as Jesus Christ did by sending the disciples to India, to Rome, everywhere. That's why the Coptic presence all over nearly the whole world now. 
You cannot find, very hardly to find any spot in the world where there is no Coptic uh, Orthodox Church present. Mm. Moving forward for when we celebrate our next milestone, what do you think or where do you see the church going in the next 25 years? I think uh, yani, the most important part of that, that of course the church should adapt with the new environment, with the new era, with, uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the surrounding environment. It is very important and very vital, but at the same time, we should not ignore, we should not bit by bit loosen ourselves and forget our roots, our culture, our tradition. We should keep the Coptic flavor, Coptic heritage, Coptic teaching, which we have received and the martyrs and our grand and forefathers has protected, defended it to the blood. They offered and sacrificed their souls to protect the Coptic and the Christian faith. We should preserve it and we should keep it going without decay, without uh, uh, losing its identity. Very well said. Magdi, thank you so much for your time today. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, Bishoy. Sure.